Hi, this is Trisha Kelly, and I'm here to share some of my information with you. Back in 2008, I had just finished writing a novel called Spirit Boy and Earth Spy. I had originally written this as a screenplay back in 1990. So during this time, I started to search around online. And I was listening for different like-minded beings who understood spirituality and could read my book, give me some feedback, endorsements, and generally maybe even start doing some radio interviews. So I had tuned into a gentleman's show that I always let Divine Spirit take me everywhere. And this is one of the things that I know very clearly is my intuition is highly in tune with who I resonate with. And I had come across a show with Curtis and Curtis was known as the Ark Messenger on Blog Talk Radio and I was just listening to his show and this is what he had said. This is what he called um, a call out. He would just randomly call out to people in the chat room. Creative Things 10. Hello Creative Things. I'm getting that you, your third eye is projecting very heavily. Um, amethyst energy being projected forward from your third eye quite heavily. Um, just communication, projecting messages. It's like you're you're talking to me and to a bunch of other people psychically. Um, it's so good for them. And you you mentally project or astrally project to them and go, um, hold on, think this through. You didn't have this bit of information. And then you've helped avert a number of disasters that way. So that was very interesting. Now he really had me captivated. Um, I had to sort of find out more about what he was saying about this incredible um, energy of changing events. So I called Curtis back a few weeks later, and um, this is what he said. He gave me more clarification. Hello, Creative Things Tim. Oh, hi, Curtis. How are you? I'm grateful to have finally gotten to you on the phone. How are Yay. you? <laughs> yeah, I know I haven't spoken to you before, and I've, um, I've listened often and um, things like that, but you were doing a shout-out the other day and just mm -hmm. randomly saying things, and I was actually cleaning away at my floor. I hadn't really heard that before, and I suddenly heard you talking about me. So I listened, and... Um, you had mentioned to me about my third eye being very open, and I don't know what okay. you remember. And I don't, but that's okay. Yeah, you said my, my third eye was very open with a lot of um, and crystal, or um, that I was able to change, I get psychic flashes, that I was able to change um, outcomes. And you went, wow, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wondered if you could elaborate on that, because I was sort of, trying to work out what you were saying. Hmm. Well, when you said crystal, I immediately saw an amethyst bed. Yeah. And as far as changing things is concerned, um, alchemy. Um, would you be comfortable giving me a name to call you, or would you prefer I just call oh, you no, creative? No, 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 no. My name is Trisha. Trisha, thank you. Um, that feels much better speaking to, to a human name. Thanks. Oh, that's Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't even... No, 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 you didn't... It's all good. Um, Trisha, the... Um, hmm. Okay, I got the alchemy part. Now, I find that kind of fascinating. I feel like in a past life, you were a very well-known alchemist, and I think I know which one, and I'm going to make sure that I get this name right. God bless the Internet. He was an alchemist, and I feel like in a past life, you were him. You carry forth a certain connection of the desire to change things at a very fundamental level in a very profound way. Um... I get the feeling that you're the kind of person who would be fascinated by the idea that there's only one molecule difference between cinnamon and turpentine, for example. Yeah. Um, and that is the heart of alchemy right there. 
Turpentine comes from the sap of a pine tree. Cinnamon comes from the bark of a pine tree. And one is highly edible and one is way not. Um, but um, I feel like you, your psychic capacity, and I'm saying with your third eye, and I'm told that's where I belong. Where I, belong. I'm, it, I don't even need to be looking anywhere else, and that's fine. Um, your psychic capacity is such that you seek out those points at which something's destiny can change or something's creation can change. And you try to take action at those moments if you feel it is an appropriate change to make. Um, are you familiar with a book called The Tipping Point? No. Brilliant book written by Malcolm McDowell, um, a recent author who's just done some phenomenal work. The Tipping Point is about social... Um, well, it's about fads and other social phenomena. And about he, what he's studying is that tipping point when they become huge, when they go from being just something happening to being a huge phenomena involving millions of people. And that tipping point is what you're all about. You look at the creation of anything, of an event, of a, of a, a person's attitudes, of a recipe, of anything. You look at the creation process, and what you're seeking out is that one finite little piece of time in the process of creation when the outcome can be altered dramatically. And when you feel that you can contribute and make that outcome much better than expected, you're there. You're all over it. And it's like that's what your passion is, and that's what your, your intuition guides you towards time and time again. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting. Kind of, kind of an exciting way to deal with details. I'm also getting told that you have a strong... Um, soul contract with Frank Lloyd Wright, the uh, architect. And he was notorious for his details and for, um, well, he wasn't considered an alchemist, but he should have been for what he was able to do with buildings and uh, with awareness of space. He should have been considered an alchemist in his own right. But I feel like you have a strong um, spiritual connection, would be a good way to put it, with Frank Lloyd Wright, and I do feel like in a past life, you were either Nicholas Flamel or his wife, but I think you were him. Okay. I, I'd like to do some research on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ought to be I interesting. Hope, yeah. yeah I, cool. I hope you like him. Um, <laughs> email me, please. I want to know what you find. Archmessenger at gmail.com. Please let me know what you find, Tricia. Yeah. Curtis and I continued talking about my book for a while and how the alchemy program that if, um, actually living with the characters actually enables you to turn them into a reality, a form of energy. And both of all of my characters always turn up in my third eye meditations. So that was wonderful. I did resonate with some of the comments that he made about um, changing events because that Myself, I have personally been involved in a few things that didn't come into play because I was able to change the outcome. There were other things that have been in my life that I noticed certain people that I'll gravitate to and have been told all the time by other spiritual teachers that they put people in front of me so that I can actually give them the information that they need. Um, I notice this also on Facebook a lot when I see very negative threads running through Facebook that I'll put comments on that will just change completely the thread. In, in fact, it stops it in its thread right there because it's not that I'm right. It's just that people get so caught into a one-sided event that to actually understand spirituality, you must live in the balance of both. And that's when you become the light in the dark. You become that beautiful shade of gray, which is where spirit lives and which is where your higher mind lives. So um, many blessings to all. And if you want to find out more about me, you can find me at www.trishakelly.net. Love and blessings.
Oh, I just absolutely love this. I sat down to make my YouTube and during the process I decided to have um, a break. And I flipped on the television and there was Frank Lloyd Wright's grandson talking to an architect. And I went, oh boy, here it is, synchronizations lined up again. I've always loved his architecture and often used to walk past a house that I lived close to and just was fascinated with how it was all set up. So that resonated straight away with me. And the interesting thing that happened with the conversation that on the show was a designer, an architect, was talking about once you tap into that creative juice, you can actually pull in all forms of creativity. You kind of escalates to the next one. And he said there was no reason to design a house without designing the furniture and designing the gardens and designing life. Well, I owned a store that I created out of really basically nothing on Melrose Avenue. And during the time, my fashion store was a new kid in town, was inundated by designers, fashion week, manufacturers. Everybody used to just gravitate towards the store because I was a constant state of creating. I had learned how to design clothes when I was a very young girl and had done it all my life. I actually had never had anything bought off the shelf. So that shows you how much I used to make my clothes. And I had taken this talent and put it into this business and it just escalated daily. It would just always keep getting bigger than smaller. And as my designs came through, I also elevated to other consciousnesses that I used to tap into too, which was songwriting. And my life became very much about music. And once again, the store was like the little lighthouse that pulled in the energies that I needed for music. I would meet up with songwriters there. I had a lot of material that was recorded from people that used to come in and buy my clothes, um, directors, all sorts of people. So there's a real magic in creation. So don't stop the flow. Just know that when you've created one thing, the most important thing that I can tell you to say to yourself is, I wonder how I do that. Because the day that you wonder is the day that you'll get your answers from spirit. So love and light.